Now let's take a look at a new feature that's just been added to one of our recent updates of software. And this would be available in the 5.1.10.0 software uh, from the uh, Converge Pro 2 console. Again, this is as of this particular recording on this date, uh, on this version, this is a new feature that you have available. And this is where you could utilize a VoIP model, uh, in this case being a 128VD, as a Skype for Business device. So uh, where I could actually bring in Skype for Business calls instead of VoIP calls. So notice on the VoIP section, we talked briefly about some of these things with the timers and audio and the proxies and the information you would have to have the IT specialist fill out. But also notice you'll, there is another tab there. It says Skype for Business stack. So the thing about this is not, notice it's grayed out is because we have already used this and the resources we've already used it for uh, a VoIP phones. So if I wanted to utilize this for Skype instead of VoIP, I would actually have to release these phones uh, that I had in the, in the previous uh, modules. So if I took those out and I, now I go back to the stack and to the settings, and under VoIP, you'll now notice that I can change this from being a VoIP SIP uh, device is now making a Skype for Business device. Now notice, because Skype for Business was selected, it will not be possible to make any VoIP or SIP calls. So you're basically going to make a VoIP DSP either be a VoIP version of that or a Skype for Business version of that. So. If you wanted to use this particular room, uh, room A or room B, whichever one you wanted to use this for, as a Skype for business, be able to do calls with that, uh, you only get that one setting. If you wanted to use one of the rooms for VoIP, you would have to bring in another mixer, uh, another VoIP mixer, and uh, set it up that way. But in this case, if I just wanted to use this for Skype for business, notice the Skype for business tab is here. Uh, you can, in most cases, just uh, check off the auto detect. And as long as you're on the network, you should be able to get a lot of the information that would show up. And if it doesn't, you would have to get with the IT specialist to help with you with some of this information uh, to put inside of that. Then you would also go to the IP phone. What's the uh, name of that particular Skype phone, uh, email, username, password, information. And as long as you put that in, you should be good. But now that I've done that, notice in resources and partitions, if I said I wanted in room A to have a Skype for Business uh, calls in there, notice I do have that line that shows up under the type. So now I would just put that into room A. But now if I go to the matrix view, you'll notice that I have uh, in room A, I have my handhelds going out to the USB and beamforming mic. Uh, but I also have Skype for Business. So if I do my uh, Skype for Business now and I wanted to be able to have those calls that are coming in be heard on the USB calls, I'd have to make that cross point as well. I'd have to make my Skype for Business call be heard through the ceiling speakers and also my handheld and my lavalier and my beamforming mic would have to be able to go out to Skype for business calls as well in that scenario. And also any USB calls that are coming into the mixer would have to go out to the Skype for business uh, calls that were connected as well. So that way everybody could hear each other. So I wanted to at least show you this particular feature because uh, this is a new that if someone wants to be able to route their Skype for business calls coming in that they can actually make that work within the VoIP models.